Hey, just come here. Come here, you. Come here. You guys want to see some cold weather gear? Well, I've got a whole bunch of really cool gloves and hats to show you guys. And it's some of my favorite picks to take out in the outdoors during the winter time. Check it out. All right, there I am. Everybody have a seat. Let Uncle Randall tell you some stories. This is a mix between military issue items and some other civilian things I've purchased. Don't worry about seeing this ugly mug. I'm just going to let you guys see the gear. If you haven't seen my army issue gloves video, go check that out first because that is every single pair of gloves that I was issued in 18 years of the army. Now, there's no general order. I just kind of have it arranged to the extremes of the weather. That's really all that is. So, you know, I've talked about the Nomex Flyers gloves before. These are excellent bushcraft fire making gloves because they're good up to about 700 degrees Fahrenheit. That just means they're not going to melt if they're exposed to extreme heat. That doesn't mean you can pick up a glowing stone or an actual coal with these gloves and you're not gonna get burned. So just to clear up any confusion on that. But these are excellent gloves and they're also good in the summertime. If you haven't seen my uh, pest video, how we keep away bugs and skeeters and all that, these are also excellent gloves for that because they come really high up. You've got your wrist cuffs right there and you can kind of protect your skin a little bit. Very cool. You can get these on Amazon for anywhere from 20 to 30 bucks. Just make sure you're getting the truly issue ones i would look for that rp2 nomex flyers gloves take a screenshot of that if you have to there are a lot of chinese knockoffs and they are not flame resistant and as i also mentioned in that critter video i always have some kind of net gator on me even in the summer because a light one like this uh out where grunt proof hq is this is really good for the dust on atvs and it's good for mosquitoes and stuff if you happen to forget your head net like a dummy so I always have these. They're also good, you know, wipe down your glasses, emergency toilet paper, whatever you need. I've had this same one for about 16 years and it's still awesome. So once it starts to dip into frigid temperatures right around freezing, if I'm really active outdoors, I will take the basic mechanics gloves, not the impact ones, but just your standard ones that you buy for about 25 bucks. Uh, especially if I'm running or working out outdoors. These are like kind of my winter PT gloves. They're not waterproof, they're not even water resistant. So if you get these wet in the cold, your hands are gonna be freezing, keep that in mind. And being a Mississippi boy, anytime it dips into freezing and below, if I go outdoors, I'm sporting one of these watch caps because I love these freaking things. This is Army Issue, this came with the uh, Army PT uniform back in the day. This is a better color, this is Coyote, and this is from Condor. You can get packs of these, I think I got three of them for about 20 bucks, so that's a damn good deal. Otherwise, they're about 10 bucks a pop, and it's fleece, just like the issue stuff, and this looks way better than this crap. These are the ECWCS version of the Flyers gloves, and they're called Flyers gloves, but they're for cold weather. I talked about these in the Army gloves video because these are my absolute favorite winter gloves. Freezing temperatures and below, usually moving, these are awesome. You got a leather palm, leather fingers, uh, even screwing around with wet stuff, it's not gonna soak through. You got protection all the way up. So you've got overlap, you can tighten it. So there's a lot of producers of this. This one's called Masley, Masley Gloves. And they're Gore-Tex. Even though the tank says do not expose to flame, they are treated with a flame resistant chemical. But these are awesome for cold weather and movement. When it comes to sleeping and freezing temperatures, I'm a hammock dude now. And the army issued these, they're called performance hoods. Some guys call them balaclavas, light balaclavas, crewman's hood, because in the beginning they were issued to Bradley and Tank guys. Now they're issued to everybody. So this is called Elite Issue. That's the same company that I got this from 16 years ago. I got this hood in about uh, 2007, and I got this hood in 2012. So not much has changed besides the better color. This is the grandma ACU color. 
So what's cool is you got this mesh netting up here on top. So even if you're wearing a helmet, you still have plenty of breathability. These are awesome because they are just warm enough to protect you in cold weather, uh, high wind chill factor, stuff like that. Um, you can wear goggles over them. And I like how it's got a stretchy material and it's got this overlap. So you can actually clear your face as much as you want. This gap is large enough, you can actually throw it down like this and wear it as a neck gaiter. What a lot of guys did back in the day was they would go to a beanie and then they would wear their neck gaiter. And so for me, that never worked that well because the neck gaiter would always come up on my neck once I had it pulled up. And then you had to basically put the beanie over the neck gaiter to keep those together. So it was really cool that the army came out with this because now you can leave this on as a neck gaiter and you just pull it up and you've got an actual hood. So unless I'm walking around in a blizzard, I don't really wear it like this unless I'm going to sleep because it's just warm enough to keep the chill off and you know you can let your nose poke out so you're not getting that freeze around here. These are really comfortable to sleep in. You could even throw on your beanie and you got a little bit of extra head warmth. There you go, man. Nice and comfortable in frigid temperatures. So moving up, this was the first balaclava that I got. I think I got this in 2005, but we were going to Romani, so I just left it at home. There you go. Hood, balaclava, foliage green, 85% wool, 15% nylon. So that's cool. You get the warmth of wool and then the stretchiness of nylon. So I think you guys have seen me wear this in a few videos. This hood is already 14 years old and you can tell because of the fit and the stretchiness and everything. Got these like wings up here, but it's still an excellent hood. No matter how cold it is, I like to have my head sticking out. So something like this is perfect for me because I can have my head sticking out. I'll put my sleeping bag up like this and my head's not freezing. And you know, again, you can pull it down a little bit so you're not getting condensation around here. You could pull this down pretty far. This is not FR. Wool is a little bit more FR than nylon and cotton, but don't think you're gonna be screwing around with flames next to this, because you will set it on fire. So now let's get into the seriously frigid temperatures. I think you guys have seen me use this before at one of my stealth camping trips. I had a limited cold weather gear. I'll put a link to the video up there. So I had limited cold weather gear, a tiny shelter, and it was just, it was freezing that night. We couldn't have a big fire all night because it was stealth camping. This is from that French company, Solomniac, that I love. You can get their stuff from Decathlon, awesome hunting brand, and this is really comfortable. This, I would usually use if I'm sitting around the campfire or I'm just sitting around freezing, you know? And I actually brought this on a few army missions. Everybody called it my Russian hat. You know, some of the hardcore guys tried to pickle me, but whatever, I was warm. You might want to leave these up and find another way to keep your ears warm because you're not going to hear something stepping around you. So in Germany, we do a lot of stealth camping. That means I want to be prepared for somebody walking up on us and catching us. And up there in Grunt Proof HQ, that's up in the Sierra Nevada mountains, I'm worried about very large predators coming around the camp. So I definitely like to hear. But otherwise, this is an excellent piece of gear. It's warm. This is not real fur. I don't care about that. It's still warm to me. So now let's get to these awesome gloves. I think I've talked about these before. These are Solignac again, that French hunting company, hunting outdoor company. If you're talking about below freezing temperatures, mittens are the way to go, especially if you're moving. Like if I'm driving around the quad up there at Grunt Proof HQ, that's a lot of wind. And in gloves, that's a lot of surface area for that wind to get into. So mittens eliminate that surface area. It's got a waterproof leather palm and thumb. And then you got a water resistant up top. What's really cool is you got a waterproof zipper and you guys have probably seen this before, but you just unzip it and now you could do stuff where you need dexterity. So what about the rubber band you may ask? Well, the very expensive versions of these have a clip. I'm a field craft dude and I also like cheap, good gear. And there you go. I remedied that, no clip, no Velcro needed. In the snow, a Velcro clip back here, that's not gonna hold long when you start getting snow on there. This rubber band works perfectly for what I need it to do. Um, if I break it, guess what? I got another two cent rubber band to replace it with. That's field craft. I think these cost about 40 bucks and I am grunt proofing these. I'm almost done. I'll probably have the grunt proof episode up by the end of this year. So stay tuned for that. So if you think about $40, I haven't found anything wrong with these yet. 
and compare that to like outdoor research, theirs is over a hundred bucks. You know, some of the really big name brands are hundreds of dollars for mittens, you know. All right, guys, that's it. Thanks for checking this out. Thanks for the questions and giving me an idea to do this. Let me know what you think down below. What pieces do you like and what pieces do you not like? Uh, what would you add to this kit? Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Click that bell up there to get notifications when I do put up a new video. If you would like to see a list of pre-approved, grunt-proof items, click on that Amazon link down in the description. I'm not pushing any products on you. I don't care if you buy anything. However, if you are in the market for new outdoor gear and you wanna make sure that stuff will not fail on you in extreme conditions, that's what my store is for. So go check it out. Till the next video, guys, I will see you in the outdoors. Prepared lives matter. Ciao.